So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Jean-Baptiste Charot. Uh, I am preparing a PhD at the French uh, Atomic Energy Commission uh, under the supervision of uh, Grégory Genest and Marc Torrent. Uh, today, I will speak about superhydrates research uh, using machine learning and uh, ab initio uh, methods. So, um, in the first part, I will introduce you the challenges related with uh, superhydrates. Uh, I will, in the second part, uh, speak about the different study systems. And in the third part, I will uh, present you the machine learning methods uh, I implemented for a new superhydrates prediction. So, superhydrates uh, are allowed. Uh, characterized by spectacular hydrogen uh, concentration inside their uh, crystal structure. Uh, that's why they are considered as promising ways so as to store energy under hydrogen form uh, in a high dense way. We are, however, at the begin beginning of the search of these new uh, materials. Uh, for their majority, the superhydrates which uh, have been synthesized uh, are called binary systems. Uh, they are made of uh, a single metallic atom type uh, combined with uh, hydrogen. Uh, despite the fact uh, spectacular hydrogen concentration have been reached, uh, the pressure synthesis required uh, is to hide. Uh, it is in the range of one million times the atmospheric pressure. With such extreme pressure, uh, it is imaginable to, uh, to have industrial application. That's why a big challenge is to find ways so to reduce this pressure. And a preliminary step is to improve our knowledge about superhydrates. So if you look at all the binary systems uh, which uh, have been uh, investigated, uh, you can plot them as a function of the elements uh, electronic activity and crystal radius. You can see that when these elements are uh, combined with hydrogen, not all of them can form superhydrides, typically like those placed on the yellow area, on the contrary to others. Uh, what is also interesting here is this region uh, which is concentrating the transition metal type elements. These elements are worth considering because if we find a superhydride, uh, which is made of a combination of transition metal type elements, which in addition remains uh, metastable or stable at lower pressure, you have a system which is um, easy to produce because transition metal type elements are far more available as others uh, like uh, real earth ones. It is for this reason that my PhD was focusing uh, on this kind of superhydrate made of transition metal type elements. So uh, to, to predict new superhydrates, we are considering one algorithm called the random structure searching algorithm. In this methodology, the, the aim is to determine the optimum atomic positions and crystal structures geometry to minimize the uh, system's energy. Indeed, when you, you plot the energy as a function of all of these degrees, uh, atomic positions, uh, crystal structures, geometry, you obtain a high dimensional surface, which is called the uh, potential energy surface. And uh, the aim is to identify the global minimum of this surface, because it is in the location of this minimum that uh, will be uh, found uh, the most stable materials, uh, which might appear during the experiment. To make this exploration possible, the algorithm is enforcing three steps. The first one is a, a sampling step. It corresponds to generate different uh, images of the system, different crystal uh, structures. The second step uh, is called the structural optimization. Uh, it uh, consists in uh, moving each initial point generated on the potential energy surface uh, to move them to local uh, minima. In this step, you modify the atomic positions, uh, the geometries of the crystal structures to minimize the energy. This step can be enforced um, only by DFT computations. And in this case, you are running the ab initio random structure searching method. You can also consider uh, machine learning potentials to make this uh, structural optimization. And it is the way I investigated during uh, my PhD. Finally, the, the third step uh, corresponds to select the most interesting structures by uh, combining different uh, criteria like uh, the computation of the enthalpy, of the dynamical stability, or the use of uh, experimental information like uh, X-ray uh, spectrum. So I want not to um, focus on the systems uh, studied uh, with uh, ab initio random structure searching. We first of all investigated uh, copper hydrides. Uh, we found that up to 150 GPA, no superhydride is formed. 
the maximal stoichiometry reach is CUH. Uh, we also found that cubic CUH is uh, dynamically stabilized uh, thanks to the height pressure. Um, all of these uh, um, results are confined by uh, recent experimental studies. Uh, we also uh, studied binary manganese superhydrides. Uh, this time we were able to predict new structures, uh, new superhydrides uh, like MNH7 and MNH8. We also checked the dynamical stability of these uh, materials. And uh, one, what is also interesting is uh, we checked at 150 GPA the zero point energy uh, contribution due to the uh, um, vibration of the of atomic hydrogen. And this contribution uh, lead to the stabilization of MNH4 and MNH8 at this pressure. Thanks to the use of uh, experimental information, we also investigated a ternary system made of yttrium and iron. Uh, we predicted um, a height stoichiometry of 10 corresponding to one interstitial type hydride, uh, which is predicted stable at 25 GPA. In addition, this system is predicted to have a negative formation enthalpy uh, at uh, normal pressure. Uh, if this is experimentally verified, uh, you have a promising system to, to reach high hydrogen uh, concentration. So um, finally, we studied uh, binary yttrium superhydrides. Uh, the ab initial random so you're searching was able to predict new superhydrides, but we also observed that this system is a place of a scientific challenge because at 150 GPA, the experimentalists synthesized a material uh, for which the obtained X-ray spectrum, experimental one, uh, cannot be explained by any of the structure uh, predicted by ab initial random so you're searching. Uh, the point explaining this, this failure uh, is probably due to the fact that uh, the uh, synthesized material is made of a lot of atoms in this primitive cell, and as a consequence, as, as a complexity which is not reachable by uh, ab initial random structure searching. Indeed, with uh, all the systems we investigated, uh, we observed that if you want to predict a compound having up to 30 atoms in its primitive cell, and if you don't have any uh, experimental information, uh, you need in the range of um, 10 million CPU hours to have a reliable prediction, and 99% of this computational cost is due to the structural optimization using uh, DFT computations. It means that if you want to predict more complex materials, you need to reduce uh, this cost, and a way uh, is the use of uh, numerical potentials, which are machine learning uh, potentials. It is a strategy I implemented so as to predict more complex binary term superhydrides, explain better the experiment. So what are numerical potentials? Numerical potentials are machine learning algorithms made of three main ingredients. The first one is a training database, which gathers uh, crystal structures and DFT computed properties. The second ingredient is a descriptor model, which translates the atomic environments into uh, vectors. And the third ingredient is a statistical model, uh, which links the uh, descriptor vectors to predictive physical quantities. I am considering two kinds of uh, numerical potentials. The first one is called the SNAP numerical potential, uh, which combines uh, a generalized neural regression with a bispectrum uh, vector. The second numerical potential is a neural network based potential using symmetry functions as a descriptor. So the, the aim in using numerical potentials is to be able to explore several uh, millions of structures. That's why you need at the same time to have uh, efficient tools so as to identify quickly the most interesting structures. For this purpose, I'm considering three uh, strategies. Uh, the first one is based on, uh, on enthalpy comparison between uh, the predicted structures, the exposed structures. The second uh, strategy is considering bispectrum vector. The principle is to compute around uh, each atom uh, the bispectrum vectors. And the obtained vectors uh, are um, uh, gathered into clusters thanks to the use of one unsupervised machine learning algorithm like a Gaussian mixture model. By this way, uh, you identify clusters of similar atomic environments. The third uh, ingredient uh, strategy uh, is based on X-ray spectrum, 
the idea is to compute for each uh, export structures uh, the X spectrum. And you compare the obtained X spectra uh, with uh, some reference ones, like coming from the experiments by using a metric. Here is uh, the process. Um, our aim was to predict more complex uh, yttrium uh, binary superhydrides, uh, which we are unable to reach with ab initial random sugar searching. That's why we decided to use one uh, machine learning process I will describe here. Um, the first uh, part of this process corresponds to initialize the first numerical potential, which is trained on one initial training database. Uh, this numerical potential enforces the expression of uh, several thousands of structures, uh, 10,000 uh, typically. Afterwards, uh, you need to select structures so as to update the uh, training database, which will be used to fit uh, another numerical potential, uh, which will realize further explorations uh, and more precise. To, to make this selection possible, uh, the idea is to use a bispectrum combined with clustering. For this purpose, we take into account the 500 structures having the lowest predicted enthalpy. Afterwards, we compute around each yttrium atom the bispectrum vector. And we gather the obtained vectors into clusters uh, using Gaussian mixture model, one unsupervised machine learning algorithm. The obtained clusters correspond to similar atomic environments. And in a second time, we built a selective structure database, which will be made of 100 structures enabling to explore the maximum of these identified atomic environments. This process enables to build a selective structure database the most diverse as possible, because we try to explore the maximum new atomic environments, and thus we convey the maximum new atomic environments uh, to, to learn for the numerical potential, maximum new information. We, we compute the DFT properties on these uh, structures, and we update the training database, we fit another numerical potentials, and uh, we realize further explorations. You can repeat this active learning cycle here several times. And at the end of the last active learning cycle, you select the structures, uh, this time based on the comparison between the simulated X-ray spectra with uh, the experimental one. And you take the structures having their closest X spectra. And finally, you optimize the structures by DFT completely. When I say I update the potential, you have here one uh, illustration. Um, here are the correlations between uh, forces predicted by a SNAP, numerical potential, and DFT computed ones. In blue are the points uh, corresponding to structures used to train a first numerical potential. This numerical potential enforces the expression of several thousands of structures, and you select some structures, and you evaluate this initial potential on the selected structures. It gives you the right points here. In the second time, you train another numerical potential on the database, which takes into account the selected structures. And uh, you evaluate this new numerical potential on the selected structures, and it gives you the yellow points here. You can see that by this way, you have uh, far more, uh, far better correlations. And it simply means that uh, by this way, you improve the knowledge the numerical potential has about the system. By using this uh, process, uh, we explored 1.6 billion of structures of uh, yttrium bina or binary yttrium superhydrate structures. Um, it required in a range of 10,000 CPU hours. The same amount of structures would require uh, around 1 billion CPU hours. We uh, also found new structures which are uh, which were un unreachable with ab initial random sugar searching due to their complexity, like uh, this one having 48 atoms in its primitive cell or this one having 42 atoms, uh, which has in addition a tetragonal symmetry. These uh, structures uh, have closer X spectra as before N. However, these X spectra still uh, don't explain completely the experimental uh, X spectrum, uh, unfortunately. So uh, in terms of uh, conclusion, I, I want to mention that with ab initial random structure searching, uh, my PhD thesis was the opportunity, opportunity to identify new binary manganese superhydrides and a promising ternary system for adult storage in a high dense way. Um, it was also the opportunity to develop a new methodology using machine learning to predict more complex materials. Um, and uh, I implemented it to uh, search new uh, binary trium superhydrides. 
the script uh, of the method uh, it is aimed to, to be available on GitHub under the name of EA uh, squared RSS for artificial intelligence driven ab initial non structure searching. The main forces uh, of this method are firstly, uh, it enables to explore much more structures uh, as before and much complex ones. Um, and in addition, in a far more uh, lower computational cost. Um, nowadays, this method does not take into account when we initially generate the structures, the experimental information. That's why a, a, one improvement way uh, is to take into account this information at the beginning. And a possibility might be to, to use the, exper the uh, experimental X-ray spectrum as input to probabilistic neural networks like variational N2 encoders, which will generate several thousands, millions of structures, which will be processed afterwards by uh, DFT or numerical potentials. So um, uh, to the end of my talk, uh, I thank you for, for your attention. Um, I want to, to thank uh, my supervisors, Grégory Jeunesse and Marc Thoran, uh, Jean-Bernard Maillet for uh, his help about the development of the machine learning potentials and the experimentalist team of Paul Hubert for uh, its involvement in the experimental confirmation of the predicted uh, superhydrates. So if you have any question, uh, ask. Thank you, Jean-Baptiste. I don't see any question at this stage in the chat. So is there people that want to ask a question to Jean-Baptiste? I had one earlier about the bispectrum. I, don't, I have no idea what that is. Uh, sorry. The bispectrum, I think you called it. Yes, bispectrum, yes. Uh, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Okay. Uh, bispectrum, uh, it is uh, called a descriptor uh, to uh, characterize one atomic environment. It, it, uh, it presents as a vector. Uh, the principle to compute a bispectrum uh, is to uh, decompose the atomic uh, density in terms of, of uh, 4D uh, spherical harmonics. And thanks to the use of this uh, decomposition, uh, you, um, uh, you uh, built uh, this uh, vector. Okay. Then there is a question by Fabien Brieux, who is asking, uh, um, why did you use both SNAP and the neural network? And since you have experience with the two of them, which one would you prefer and favor, at least for your application? And if I may add, I mean, for the neural network, I guess that you used uh, some descriptors. Were they the same as for SNAP? Um, uh, for neural networks, bispectrum is not used as a descriptor. It was uh, your question. Um, it is a, um, a less complex uh, descriptor, which is uh, called a symmetry function. But a neural network is a much more complex statistical model as a SNAP. And that's why we compensate uh, this uh, uh, more simpler descriptor, the simpler descriptor by a more complex uh, statistical model, which uh, can realize more precise uh, predictions. Okay. okay, can you say again which descriptor you use? And then there's the question of Jean-Baptiste, which is which one do you recommend? Okay, can you repeat, sorry? So could you say it again? What are the descriptors that you use for the simpler ones that you use for the neural networks? Uh, and then is there is the question, the question of Jean-Baptiste, oh, sorry, of uh, Fabien, who is asking oui. which one of the two methods do you recommend? Um, the, the two, the, for the, the, the Fabien Brieu question, uh, for the comparison between SNAP and neural network, um, indeed, it is two complementary uh, a model uh, which will uh, be uh, which can make complementary predictions. Uh, I prefer to use neural networks at the end after using a SNAP because SNAP will be able to explore much more structures as neural networks. It is uh, less time consuming for the training. And afterwards, as a last expiration, you can use neural networks to uh, finalize the expiration and have uh, eventually more uh, precise results. Uh, it is for the first question. And for neural networks, the uh, descriptor used uh, is uh, called symmetry function. Uh, 